Okay, now that we've covered the basics of crystal field theory and discussed uh, relative stabilities of electron configurations, let's now talk about how electrons get distributed um, in octahedral crystal fields. And then we can think about this at least in terms of um, how magnetic properties can, can change and some of the terminology that's going to be used. So let's um, distribute some electrons um, in a few representative configurations to begin with. So if you recall, if we have an octahedral um, field, uh, the T2G set is here and the EG set is up there. And if you have a, a D1 or a D2 or a D3 configuration, you really have no choice about where to put the electrons. You want to maximize spin multiplicity, so you really have to put them all in the T2G orbital set under those conditions. So what you basically get here is in, in this particular case, you could exchange two electrons in, in that configuration, and you have the ability to exchange three electrons in, in that configuration. Um, but there's really nothing that is beneficial energetically about, about putting any of these electrons either in these orbitals or these orbitals um, and promoting them uh, into the, uh, the EG set with respect to the T2G set. So there's no real reason to do this and it's more stabilizing from D1 to D3 to, to basically have these types of configurations which are maximizing spin multiplicity. But then an interesting thing happens when you get to a D4 configuration. So um, representatively speaking, um, we're going to have some examples of this, but like, for example, chromium-2 is a, is a D4 um, system that we could, you know, kind of use as a representative example. But this is just hypothetical for now. So how do we distribute the four electrons in a D4 configuration. So there's two options now. We can basically put everything into exclusively the T2G set, which um, what you can kind of tell from this is, is that here you're actually spin pairing one of these one of these electrons. So that gives you a pi C sort of interaction. And then what else is left? Well, then you've got three electrons that you can exchange. So that's actually good news, is that you have the ability to, you know, sort of at least exchange multiple electrons. So that helps stabilize the configuration. But there is another option. So you can also spread out um, those electrons to maintain the highest state of, of spin multiplicity possible. So what you can do is you then now have taken one of those electrons from the T2G set and you put it in the EG set. They're still both D4 configurations, but what you recognize is, is that both compounds would be paramagnetic, but this one over here has two unpaired electrons and then this one has four. So the magnetic moment of the, the configuration on the right is much greater than the magnetic moment for the configuration on the left. And then you kind of get to this situation of which one do you get? And if you get the one on the left, that's called the low spin configuration because it minimizes the number of spins. If you remember, that's minimizing spin multiplicity. So that's called the low spin D4 configuration. And then of course over here, um, is going to be the high spin D4 um, configuration. Let me make sure that those are nice and clear for you. And what you're going to wind up doing is in these configurations that we're generating, and I want to make sure that I, I keep all of this very clear to everybody, is notice what happens is in the high spin configuration, you basically have a three, um, you have three pi E as uh, the stabilizing effect. So you can exchange three electrons. You can't exchange anything up here because that's a different energetic orbital and there's nothing for that electron to exchange with, so there's no exchangeable electrons. But then in this configuration over here, you can kind of see what happens. There's a, there's a spin paired um, 
configure spin paired orbital. So that's one of the coulombic repulsion interactions. But then there's three pi e interactions. And when you see that, you kind of recognize what we did before is the lowest energy configuration is going to be the one on the right. So the one on the right here is lower in energy, and then that gives us an interesting consequence. If um, the total pairing energy is greater than the ligand, or the crystal field stabilization energy, so remember in here, that is del zero, or del, um, del O, I should say. I keep saying del zero, sorry. Um, del O, and, and if the magnitude of the pairing energy is greater than del O, you will get the high spin configuration. If you kind of reverse the situation, and then remember what's happening here is the combination of this is lower in energy, um, sorry, it's higher in energy than the, than the situation that is you know, on the right. So if you kind of get in that situation, you could be in this position now where, um, where del O is actually greater than the pairing energy, and then that results in a low spin configuration. So what you get from this is, it's gonna be the magnitude of del O that really comes into play in thinking about what's gonna happen in these, in these systems. 